Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Eric Ten Hag slams belief of Man United players after City humiliation. Uh, Ten Hag came out and said that it was an unacceptable performance. Like I said, Manchester United were embarrassing. Manchester City were totally dominant, especially in that first half. Manchester City were 4 0 up at half time. Um, obviously, Phil Foden got a hat trick. It was his first career hat trick. And Erling Haaland also got a hat-trick. It was his third home hat-trick in a row. So reflecting on that, he made Premier League history. Haaland could have had more than three goals because he did have an opportunity when he hit the side netting. Haaland also provided two assists in the game. Gundogan, you know, he could have scored for City because he had a chance from a free kick, hit the post. Man City had around 22 shots in the game. You can say Manchester United come back in the second half, but the game was already done and dusted. Uh, Anthony Martial, he got two goals for Man United, uh, one from a header. Um, it was a rebounded header that came from a Fred shot that was saved by the City goalkeeper and Anthony Martial scored a penalty. And Anthony also scored a stunning goal. Apart from the goal, though, Anthony did nothing in the game. So Manchester United have got to bounce back from that 6-3 defeat. Now I want to give you some news regarding Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo can leave Manchester United in January. Eric Ten Hag says, Eric Ten Hag will not stand in his way. When Eric Ten Hag first took over Man United, he actually wanted Cristiano Ronaldo to stay. Uh, Ronaldo didn't play against Manchester City. He was on the bench. Ronaldo did play in Manchester United's 2-0 win against FC Sheriff. He scored in that game from the penalty. That was his first goal this season and his 699th career goal. Uh, Ronaldo also started in the 1-0 defeat to Sociedad. Ronaldo has not started a lot of games this season. Eric Ten Hag could receive £100 million if Ronaldo leaves in January. Uh, Ronaldo's contract at Man United expires next year. He is an option to extend for a further year. Man United re-signed Ronaldo last year from Juventus. So Ronaldo's been his second spell at Man United. Since he re-signed, he's got 18 goals in the Premier League and he has 25 goals in all competitions. Not so long ago, Ronaldo got charged by the FA over the mobile phone incident at Everton. Revert back to August, Ronaldo got cautioned for the incident. And after the incident, Ronaldo apologised to social media. So that's the news on him. Uh, I, I say quite a lot of players are going to leave Manchester United next year. You know, Ronaldo. Um, I reckon we could sell Anthony Martial because he doesn't get in the team much. Like I said, Martial came on against City and got two goals to his credit. Um, he'd just come back from injuries. Missed a lot of games this season through injuries. 
Last season, Marcio was out on loan with Sevilla. Martial is under contract to Man United until 2024. Man United got Martial from Monaco back in 2015. Martial's been at United then for a good seven years or so. Uh, David De Gea, um, he's nearing a Manchester United exit. Atletico Madrid are interested in re-signing De Gea. Um, De Gea was at Atletico Madrid before he came to Man United. And De Gea is wanted by Juventus on a free transfer at the end of the season. You know, Man United could let De Gea leave on a free at the end of the season. Um, his contract at Man United expires next year, but there is an option of an additional year. De Gea earns around £375,000 a week at Man United, one of the highest paid players. <laughs> uh, De Gea's enjoyed around 11 years or so at Manchester United. So reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. Been with us since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. De Gea has made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions and he's won everything domestically at the football club. Revert back to earlier on this year, won the Players Player of the Year award. Uh, De Gea was in goal in Man United's 6 3 defeat to Man City. Uh, like I said on the play ratings, he was blameless for all of Man City's 6 goals. Couldn't do anything about them goals. Our poor defence let De Gea down. Uh, I reckon we could get rid of Dean Henderson permanently at the moment. Dean Henderson's out on loan with Nottingham Forest. Uh, Alex Tellez, I reckon we'll get rid of him permanently. Tellez is out on loan with Sevilla at the moment. Uh, Luke Shaw, I think he could be leaving next year because there's no way back for Luke Shaw now in the Man United team because Terrell Malassia is our first choice left back. Uh, he's been impressive in a lot of games this season, Malassi, but I thought he was poor against Man City and he did get a yellow card. Uh, but Luke Shaw, he did come on in the game against City. Um, had a knock earlier on this season. He is injury prone, which is a concern. Luke Shaw's enjoyed around nine years or so at Man United, so reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. Shaw's contract at the club expires next year. Harry Maguire, I reckon he's going next year. Harry Maguire played no part in the 6-3 defeat to Man City. Well, he's been injured, hasn't he? Gareth Southgate confirmed not so long ago that he picked up a hamstring injury. Jamie Gar Carragher came out and said that Harry Maguire cannot save his Man United career. If Maguire had been fit against City, he still wouldn't have played because he's no longer one of our first-choice centre-halves following the arrival of Lissandro Martinez. Uh, Man United overpaid for Maguire, got him for £80 million from Leicester. Uh, revert back to last season, the vast majority of Man United fans were demanding for the captaincy to be taken off Harry Maguire. Lindelof, I reckon he'll be leaving next year as well. Uh, Phil Jones, he'll be leaving next year. Uh, Tuan Zerbe should be leaving next year. Last season, he was out on loan with Villa. He's enjoyed like three loan spells with Aston Villa. Brandon Williams should be leaving next year as well. Um, he doesn't get in the team. He's been injured. Uh, last season, he was out on loan with Norwich. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, I reckon he'll be leaving next year as well. No way back for him in the team because Diego Delo is Manchester United's first choice right back. Delo's played in every game this season. He's been impressive in a lot of games, but I thought Delo was poor against City. Offered very little going forward. Positioning weren't that good and he did receive a yellow card early on. Uh, Fred, um, I think he's on his way out next year. Um, he did come on against Manchester City, provided the assist for one of Martial's goals. So he did all right. But Fred's no longer one of our first choice centre midfielders following the arrivals of Casemiro and Christian Eriksen. As you all know, I've got my strong reservations about Fred. Man United got Fred from Shakhtar Nesk. 
around four years ago for around 52 million. So there you go. You know, we have seen a lot of players leave Manchester United this year. Uh, we saw, obviously, James Garner go to Everton. We saw Andres Pereira. Ethan Laird went out on loan to QPR. Hannibal Meadsbry went out on loan to Birmingham. Ahmad Diallo Triari went out on loan to Sunderland. Tellez went out on loan to Sevilla, Bay went out on loan to Marseille, Dean Henderson went out on loan to Nottingham Forest, Lee Grant left earlier on this year, Edison Cavani left on a free, Juan Mata left on a free, Lingard left on a free to go to Nottingham Forest, Matic and Pogba both left on free transfers. And, you know, we saw quite a few young players leave. Um, as you all know, Eric Ten Hag so far has made six signings as Manchester United manager. He obviously recommended Terrell Malassia in, Christine Eriksen, Lissandro Martinez, Casemiro, Anthony and Martin Dubravka. Uh, Man United have spent over two hundred million this year. Uh, as you all know, Eric Ten Hag has already revealed his transfer plans for January. Uh, Ten Hag did say that Man United will continue to hold meetings over strengthening the squad. Uh, I heard that Ten Hag's going to get a transfer budget of around seventy million. The January transfer window will be Ten Hag's second transfer window as Man United manager. And I'm hoping he does receive very good backing. There's a lot of players we've been in for, you know, we've been in for Frankie de Jong for quite some time. You know, we've been in for Jude Bellingham. Uh, we've been tentatively linked with Harry Kane. So there you go. Um, Eric Ten Hag, not so long ago, got named the Premier League Manager of the Month. Ten Hag has been the Manchester United manager now for quite a few months. He got appointed in earlier on this year to replace Ralph Rangnick. Um, under the Ten Hag era so far... Man United have been 4 0 down twice at half time. We was 4 0 down to Man City at half time the weekend, and we was 4 0 down to Brentford at half time, and we lost to Brentford 4 0. I think, revert back to when we had Solskjaer, I think we was only 4 0 down once at half time, and that was the 5 0 defeat to Liverpool at Old Trafford. Uh, Ten Argus, Man United manager. He's won around five games, is it, in all competitions, and he's lost four games in all competitions. You know, I'm not going to prejudge Eric Ten Hag reflecting on that loss to Man City. You know, I did say after the game that, you know, Ten Hag got some decisions right, he got some decisions wrong. But it's the players that have got to take responsibility as well as the manager. This is Eric Ten Hag's first full season as Man United manager. And he knows he's got big expectations to exceed at Man United. You know, if Ten Hag could get as a top four finish this season, you could underline that and say that's a good first season. If he was to win a trophy, that would be even better because Man United have not won a domestic trophy since 2017. you got to give credit for when Ten Hag was at Ajax, because when he was at Ajax, he won every device titles, he won Dutch Cups and revert back to 2019. He got Ajax to the Champions League semi-finals and he also developed the young players well. Before uh, Ten Hag 
manage Utrecht, buy Munich's reserves and go ahead Eagles. Um, he is Manchester United's fifth permanent manager since Sir Alex Ferguson. Since Ferguson, you know, Man United obviously had Moyes for 10 months with sacked him. He only enjoyed the short managerial tenure at the club. Man United finished seventh under David Moyes. And after Moyes, Man United had Louis van Gaal. We sacked him after two years or so. We did win the FA Cup under him. And then after that, Manchester United had Jose Mourinho. We sacked him after like two and a half years. Mourinho did enjoy one good season at Man United because he won three trophies in his first season. And after that, Man United had Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We sacked him in November last year. He was Man United manager for almost three years and obviously earlier on this year we saw Rangnick leave. Ralph Rangnick was Man United's interim manager for around five months. So there you go. And obviously we've got Mitchell van der Gag and Steve McLaren at the club. They've been working alongside Eric Ten Hag. Eric Ten Hag was the one that recommended them in. Uh, we've got Benny McCarthy at the club. We've got John Murtiff. He's our director of football. We've got Richard Arnold. He's our CEO. He actually replaced Ed Woodward when Ed Woodward resigned. Earlier on this year, Sir Alex Ferguson came back to Man United in an advisory role. And obviously the Glazers are still at Manchester United. And the Glazers have been a massive problem at the club for so many years now. And for a while, Man United fans have been protesting against the Glazers. Earlier on this year, it said the Glazers were open to selling a minority stake in Man United. Uh, don't forget, Man United did confirm that they'd paid out £33.6 million in dividends, mostly to the Glazer family, um, in the financial year of up to June 30th, 2022. So the Glazers have been borrowing more money. Uh, the Glazers have owned Man United since 2005, so they've owned the club now for around 17 years. As you all know, uh, Michael Knighton's been interested in buying United. Uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe's been interested in buying Man United. Earlier on this year, Elon Musk joked about buying the club as well. So there you go. Um, I do believe Man United have at least three years off winning the title. You know, the last time Man United won the Premier League was back in 2013, which is almost 10 years ago now. And um, not so long ago, I gave you the news regarding Marcus Rashford. Uh, Marcus Rashford won the Premier League Player of the Month for September. Rashford's done well in a lot of games this season. You know, he did very well in the 3-1 win against Arsenal at Old Trafford. He scored twice in that game. He scored in the 2-1 home win against Liverpool. Uh, but I thought Rashford was very poor in the Manchester derby. You know, he was anonymous in that game. But he's just come back from injury, hasn't he? Um, on my next video, I will be giving you a preview for the Ammonia Nicosia versus Man United game. It is the Europa League. It's Man United's third game in the group. So anyway guys, it's everything to update you. If you drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thank you for watching.